Hey everybody, welcome to another episode where I'm interviewing somebody super interesting. This time we have Jess from Switzerland, who is a super interesting designer, also a student of my Webflow Masterclass, and I want to talk to him about that and just in general hear his story because he had phenomenal success. So what's up, Jess? Thanks for taking the time to, to talk to us today. Hi, Ran. Hi, Flexors. Well, I'm happy to be here and I'm based in Switzerland and I currently run a small uh, design studio which sells uh, various kind of pro services uh, from web design to graphic design and branding, mainly. And, what, and, and, and your background, like what's your background? How did you get into running a design business? <laughs> well, this is totally um, integrated into, into my business model and my services. I started, uh, well, to put the, the context, two years ago, I was bartending. Can you imagine that? I was bartending really? <laughs> and I was designing posters. <laughs> While bartending, I was studying psychology. And then I, okay. I make a small breakthrough into finances and all that mixed together led me to really having some real impact on businesses, firstly on startups. And then I slowly started to reach out to bigger company how did you move from doing poster design into more like maybe digital design or working with startups? Well, it's, it's kind of a good, huge challenge because you really have to trust yourself. And to be honest, I spent three, over three years just designing posters, banners for Facebook ads. And I made like really small money, but to me it was really, really good. And that was the first insight when I really knew that I can earn some cash getting paid really to design something and to, to leave out from something I really love. Did you, did you learn everything, everything that you learned about design you learned by yourself like or online? How did you get into design? Well, uh, funny enough, my father ran a printing shop and I always was really surrounded by design, catalogs, booklets, and all the words. So I knew the words. I knew the word Photoshop's. I've seen Illustrator in action, but I've never touched it as a kid. But I was always drawing, drawing, and seeing stuff that I was really appealed to, like advertising. Uh, how does one want to buy something? instead of another product, the same chocolate, for, for instance. And that was always something that I was really diving deep into, getting the, the why and the how in terms of shapes and stuff like that. So I guess si since I was a child, I was always really into that. But then yeah. from really action, um, was like, I think, uh, to be precise, was like five years ago when I started to just browse the internet like, like crazy. And I went through all the tutorials and then I discovered YouTube as a way to be educated instead of just, instead of just listening to music. And once you just discover that, that YouTube has a tremendous amount of content that is really valu valuable and deep, precise, or wide when you need something to know something widely. Then I, I really dove into that. And two years later, I'm just able to do printing, design, logo stuff, branding, and really from only YouTube and several blogs, but mainly just 90% of YouTube and looking at Flux, for instance, or other channels that we all know. Um, that's crazy. So when you said when I started off and doing posters and stuff for Facebook and I was making so much little money, like were you doing that as a full time? Were you doing that like on the side while working in something else? Like how did you get started? Well, the main goal is that now I can make to me it's good money. And I really want to share something that and be really total transparent about about money. And uh, to be honest, I was designing posters for $50 and I was investing sometimes up to one week. I was really 
one week for a fifty dollar post. Yeah, because it was <laughs> all about patience, you know, and yeah. all about and I mean for all freelancers or people that want to dive into the business, that's the first jump you have to do. Invest yourself producing good quality. Because if you master the tools, it just huge money you can make then. Don't try to sell something you, you don't master now. And that was a way to be, I mean, that was fair, you know, I was getting small money, but I was like really mastering the tools. And I was mixing Photoshop right. and Illustrator and doing some illustrations, typography, and learning from that. Okay, so how did you make, how did you make the transition into making more money and, and you know, working with startups and, and pro providing more value? Well, I don't want, I don't want to say one thing and another, but at, at some point, you know that you're good at something. To me, it was visuals. I knew how to do posters, banners, some kind of branding, I, I guess. And then was the second step. Fake it till you make it. And I was like hearing people saying, well, a branding and a logo cost between 2K and 5, 5K. I just find it some client in the bar. Like really, the, the first five clients was actually my own boss. Okay, and funny enough, that's great. Just, While you were working at the bar as a bartender, yeah. you sold branding to your boss. Exactly. In terms of business, Amazing. because I, I was inside of the business and I also knew the clients, where they work, what I, what I really wanted to reach as on a personal level, you know, some, some people just told you about, oh, I have this big idea. And I, I was really listening to them for like months. And then I just took my courage and offered them my services. So you've been talking about launching a brewery, for instance. Let's make it happen. And funny enough, we launched a brewery and by doing some business branding, new labels on, on their bottles, and they were able to reach out to new companies and actually uh, huge shops. And they went from minus 8K investing on, on the brewery materials to plus uh, 12K in one month. Okay. And so they've returned the investment. Yeah. And the design was a big part of that. Yeah. And now it's kind of my business model because I knew what I, the, the stuff I brought into the table had some value. And from that point, I just took the same business model. Is, and it's actually pretty simple. You invest three francs, three dollars in my company you get six, nine, or 10. It's always that value exchange. I can be sure that the value of the work I produce, what I invest in, will help you in your business. And that was kind of the transition. And then it was really the third step, fake it till you make it, that's the second step. And the third step will actually be just grow in number. When you charge 2K for a logo, get a little bit better uh, in presentation, mockups. You don't have to get better in logo design. That's for sure a huge plus. But from that point, just put a context that's clean, sleek, that looks professional, and you can go up from 2K times two, and you reach to four, 5K. And that was always the step I've just took. And now with the web flow, it's an all new adventure. So how did you move from selling only the branding? When did you decide to add websites to your kind of your services? At what point? <clears throat> well, this is really one flux because for one year, I've just been looking at all the video you've done. And then I really had to dive into websites because honestly, when you, when you are really focused on bringing value to the client, Digital services, digital products, actually mainly websites. This is the first thing you have to do for a client. If he, he, if he doesn't have something that represents him well, as a designer, you have to do a better work on website. You can work on partnership, but designer is a way to solve problem. It's not the fact that you can only work on Illustrator or Photoshop. And that was the mentality diving into Webflow. And I was re-watching all your video about Webflow, Webflow. And you re I, I can remember you talk about choosing Webflow 
and another product. And then how to sell Webflow to clients. What's the plus, what's the minus. And I, I was really starting to think, well, that Webflow stuff, I see the ads, I see Run using it for one year, still sticking to it. That was the huge proof. A professional that communicates about his number yearly. And I remember last year you've made like 200,000. 2017 and to me it was like so huge i was still selling a logo for like two one to two k and you've been choosing webflow as the main tool one year later showing the results i was <laughs> if ron does it i can surely jump into that and this is what okay. I, I really started and did you, to okay so did you immediately took the like my master class or did you try to learn it alone by yourself what was your kind of how was your decision made um i choose to jump into your master class because after looking into all the information you can have on youtube because it's really straightforward to find them on the internet it was just too wide and this masterclass, yeah. how you presented it, I really took a leap of faith and really believing that everything that you were showing was really into in the masterclass. And after the masterclass, I must say, I'm not an expert, but I can, I really can use Webflow well from designing to selling to managing client and the overall experience around Webflow. So they're delivering okay, and, CMS and, and sorry, I just cut you, but it's really awesome to me because you, you, you don't only show how to use Webflow, you also show how to sell it, how to overcome objections, what's really into Webflow as a CMS. And for the client, for me, that provides this service, this whole mastermind, just that took me like one weekend to to complete just i just started on friday monday was able to work and to be honest as i always do i just went outside and just sell a, the first website for 10k and now it's delivered and the client awarded me for over like 20k of other contract because not only he liked the website but mostly he liked the tool and he liked the CMS and how I presented everything because I've learned it into the masterclass. Amazing. I think my camera is about to die in like three seconds, so I might have to cut it short. But first of all, thank you so much for, for sharing your story with us. Um, can you share a little bit? You said there that you found partners in the Facebook group. Can you share a little bit about that? Oh, yeah. Never forget that. Um, actually, <laughs> one of the huge value you have to get into the mastermind is getting into the private group on Facebook, which is called the mastermind group. And in that group, in, in around like three days, was able to really connect with people that were really invested and that some kind were really proofed. So every people on the mastermind group is checked. So you can trust them. It's kind of a, a really a uh, small community we all do and aim for the same goal and we just share uh, from the professional side because that was like the human side social level uh, from the pro professional side I've all already hired two freelancers and they just they've done perfect work was really fast and to me I can tell you that was so much money to be able to find someone that has this little knowledge on CSS, on grid, on design, on icons, and we're just connecting into that, that group. And to me, that's also a huge value. Amazing. Thank you so, so much for taking the time to talk to me and share your, your success with me. I'm super, super inspired, and I hope a lot of people will also follow your actions and show that it's possible to build your own design career from scratch, from bartending, into such a huge success like Do yourself. it! Thank you so much, Jess. Thank you, Ran. <laughs> Have a nice soon, day. Man. Bye. Bye-bye.